service at Disciple Central Community Church, we grow and become the greatest disciple God created you to be. And so what we have done here and what we take on is discipleship and we want to make sure we're in a rhythm. And so we have what we call a model disciple that every year we want to make sure we educate the mind. We want to lift up prayer with the heart. We want you to serve with your hands and do outreach with your legs, feet, and arms in every part of your body. And how do we do this? We want to make sure uh, that you understand who's in rhythm because we have to have a rhythm of discipleship throughout the whole year. And we want you to join us on this journey. And so men are in rhythm, women, seniors, young adults, married, students, all our special areas have their own special way to grow together in community. And we're excited about that. It's been a wonderful journey. Now, here's what this really looks like. Uh, when you come into our building as, as, and also on our website, you'll see that the first month of each quarter uh, is Adoration Month. We worship together in those particular groups. Each group worships together. The second month of that quarter will be education. We grow together in Bible study together, discipleship groups. And then the third month is hands-on application. I mean, after we worship and after we learn, we now go apply it. And now this year is going to be off the chain because the first quarter, we're dealing with mindset matters. Second quarter, we're going to deal with health matters. Third quarter, we're going to deal with relationship matters. And the final one, decisions matter. We want you to get in rhythm with us. We want you to be connected right away. We've made it a simple process. So go to your web browser on your phone, your laptop, or whatever device you have. Go to dc3online.org. Once you do that, then you get to the website and click the Connect tab. And your Connect tab, you click that and go to Communities. And once you click Communities, there is a tab that says Ministries. Scroll down. And there you have the ministry community guide in your hand detailing everything we just went over and more so you can grow together in our discipleship rhythm. You're on your way to becoming a model disciple for Jesus Christ. Let's go. Let's get in rhythm. Good morning, DC3 family. How y'all doing out there? I am Reverend Dan Pride, and, and this I'm, is... I'm Vanika Pride. And we're here this morning to welcome you to our service and to give you our, the, all of the events that are going on here at DC3. Hey, while you're doing that, we need you to go ahead, let us know where you're from. Go ahead and put that in the chat session on whatever medium you're watching us on this morning. Also, while you're doing that, we need you to help us spread the word. We want you to be a digital disciple. How do you do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Just go ahead and hit that share button and share it out to all your homies, your family, co-workers, because you know some of the co-workers probably need it because you need to pray for them. Spread it, spread the word, be a digital disciple. While you're doing that, if you have any prayer requests, you can go ahead and put that down in the chat section too because we know there are a lot of things going on in this world. And also, man, when you look at the news every single day, you see what's going on in politics, just all the conflicts around the world. I know it's giving a lot of people a lot of anxiety. So, man, if you need prayer, go ahead and put that prayer request down there in the chat session, or you can email prayer at DC3 online. And while you're doing that, we need you to partner with us in ministry. You can do that via a number of ways. You can go to Givelify, the church website. You can email it in. You can text to give. You can even give it here in person. All you have to do is call the church, schedule the time to do so. Again, we want you to partner with us in the ministry. As you know, we each uh, quarter, we have a different subject matter. We just finished up Mindset Matters, and today is the first Sunday of April, which starts the new quarter, so we are now in Health Matters. We have a ton of events that are going to be going on this month, and so I'm going to kick it over to Vanika so she can tell you what we have going on. So the events we do have going on this second quarter in Health Matters, today we start with the Salad Bar Sunday. So after church, make sure you go and make your salad. Every Monday is going to be Meatless Monday. Every Wednesday is Water Wednesdays. And on April 4th and 18th, we're coming up on the 18th, we have grief counseling. This Thursday and also on the 27th, we have work out. So come on out and participate in these events to celebrate Health Matters. Hey, our young adult, the Lounge Ministry, they're going to start off this month having an event today starting at 2.30 at Backyard Dallas. Again, this is for all our young adults. Come out, hang out, fellowship, have a good time. And if you need to know what a young adult is, uh, Deacon Johnny Smith is not a young adult. 
So uh, come on out and join us. Um, what else we got going on? Uh, right in the rhythm we got going on. Well, we're in our first quarter of our, uh, on the first part of our second quarter, which is adoration. So we had a lot of worship services going on this month. Hey, the worship service is going to kick off with our refined community uh, on this Tuesday, uh, the 9th, starting at 1 p.m. That is for our 55 and up uh, members of our church. So come out, kick it with the refine. Uh, following that is going to be the lounge. They're going to start on the 23rd at 7 p.m. here at the church. And then our man up and then our women's worship services will be on the 21st at 8 a.m. here at the church. And then we will close out the month with our committed on, on the 28th. That's going to be our 8 o'clock service too as well. And so again, we are in uh, the month of adoration. And so come out, worship with your individual communities, and let's lift up God. What else we got going on? Also today after church, we're going to pick back up on financial freedom. Uh, please come out immediately after church with I was broke, now I'm not. Hey, DC3, these have been your announcements and your events that are going on here at the church. If you need more information, go to our website or go to our DC3 app and check out everything that's going on. Don't just be a consumer. Hey, come out and produce and be a part of the ministry. Guess what? It is now time to go high in worship. We're going to turn this over to our worship team. Worship team, let's go get it. Praise the Lord in this place. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Stand on your feet all over the house. Give God what he deserves. Put your hands together and glorify the God who has done exceeding abundantly above all things that you be even dare to imagine. Come on, if he's done something for you this week, would you just turn to your neighbor and tell him how God brought you through? Just take about 20 seconds and share your testimony. The Bible said where two or three are gathered in touch and agreeing as to anything he would be in the midst so God, we invite your presence today. Hallelujah, you are great. You are a mighty God. You're an awesome God. We glorify you this morning, Father. We thank you for your presence this morning, Father. Come on and lift your hands in this place. Put your hands together and glorify your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is, God is, God is, God is, God is. God is. Tell your neighbor God is. God is.
Sunday, it'd be packed. And then the next Sunday, the real ones come back. So we want to thank y'all for joining us on today. Listen, we are going to have a good time today. We hope that you'll engage with us, worship with us, sing with us, clap your hands, stomp your feet, get up out of your seat. We want to see you worshiping the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Growing closer to God is better when we're in rhythm. Our second quarter is Health Matters. In this quarter, we will focus on our spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical health. Registration is open for grief counseling and workouts if you check our website and app under discipleship. Your community groups will connect with God through worship, with services, prayer, and other fellowships. Our refined community, give it up for the refined community. They are going to have their first worship service on this Tuesday at 1 p.m. on April 10th. So all of our refined community, make sure that you're here on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Our financial training sessions will also continue today. Remember, right after service, we're going to jump right back into it. The next four classes, we are going to focus on debt, investing, insurance, and sustaining the gains. Please remember to register and order your line, child care, all of that on Fridays before the next Sunday so that we can have that taken care of for you. Today, we're going to kick out a kickoff health matters with a salad bar. So we have all kind of toppings. We have everything that you need to make the best salad you ever had today. It's DC3 style. It's going to be three different stations, so you don't have to wait in line a long time. Go to one of those stations, make you a salad. It is free. It is free. Please, we made enough for everyone, so please come out and enjoy that, and I'll see you all at the end of service. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hello? Ready. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What are we about to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. What are we about to do? All right. All right, y'all. One, two, three. Our mission is to teach and preach the Word of God, develop leaders for the home and society, use relevant and modern methods of outreach, and express Christ through culture. We will also create opportunities for individuals to develop successful relationships with Christ, themselves, and their God-assigned communities. Amen. Come on, DC, put your hands together and welcome our pastor. Come on, y'all, put your hands together and give God some praise in the house today. It's the first come together for this quarter. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me try it again. Somebody give God glory in the house today. Y'all still a little dry. Somebody say hallelujah. All right. Now we're so glad to have you in the house of the Lord. Right now our children are coming because they're taking the star test this week. Somebody say amen. Can y'all give it up for our babies who are taking the star test this week? Y'all ain't clapping loud enough. You, you had too much eggnog or something this weekend? You had too much dressing from Easter. All right. Now, let me try it one more time. Can we clap for our young people? That sounds a little better. Who are taking the star test. Listen, what I want you to do, you can be seated where you are. I want you to stretch your hands toward them uh, because we want to make sure they uh, are covered in prayer in every way. And then we're going to have roll right into our prayer for everyone else. But we want to make sure we wanted to have a special time of prayer uh, covering for our students today. So if you would, go ahead and stretch your hands toward our youngsters today. Uh, this is our now and next generation. Somebody say amen. Y'all done got a crowd all over in the corner. There's a whole big old thing over here. Y'all can actually step forward so everybody won't be all up on each other. It's okay. You won't die. All right, you can step forward, you can step forward. All right, all right, so let's go to God in prayer this day. Father, we thank you for being such a great God. We thank you right now for every child, every youth that stands in your presence, even right now. And so God, we thank you that God, you're gonna help them get the proper rest they need this week for their test. Not just for their test, but for class and everything that they need to take care of this week. We thank you, God, that you will minimize distractions and renew their focus, God, so they can do uh, the very best that you've created them to do. Now, God, we thank you, God, for a good night's nice rest. We thank you, God, for good people around them that will encourage them to let them know it's okay to be smart, and that's cool, too. 
We thank you, God, that they don't have to yield to the pressures of other people who may not want to be successful and do the things that want that needed to be successful. But we thank you right now for our youth who are not just going to pass these tests. They're going to excel on these tests. As a matter of fact, we're putting our hands together, clapping in advance because we know they are fearfully and wonderfully made in your presence. God, we love you. We thank you. We thank you, God, for them as they go also into worship today, uh, worship in youth and children's church, that, God, they may connect in a fresh way with you, uh, that they don't have to be 50 or 60 to give you their praise. They don't have to be 70 or 80 to yield their lives to you. And so we thank you right now, God, how you're going to speak to them and touch them, and that will overflow into this week as they journey through this week and the rest of this school year. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people say amen. Can y'all clap it up for our babies in the house? Come on, clap it up. Clap it up. Clap it up. It's now time for our prayer right here. Yeah, for our prayer for our congregation. Let's give it up for Reverend Shatina Davis today, y'all. The Lord is in his temple. Let the heavens be still. Let the earth be still. The Lord will speak through us on today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as our leaders come, as our leaders come, please not be ashamed to have someone pray with you and for you. He said where two or three are gathered, he would be in the midst. Come on up so that we can pray for you. Let us pray. Most heavenly and gracious Father, how we adore you, we love you, we bless and honor you on this morning, Father God. For you are God and God alone. You are worthy of all the praise, Father God. We thank you for traveling grace, for waking us in our right minds this morning, for activity of our limbs, Father God, for the mindset to get to this place, God, and to hear from you, O oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you for a pastor, Lord God, that's in obedience, Lord God, in his life, in his walk, in his talk, Lord God, in his preaching, in his teaching, Lord God. We ask that you just continue to bless him, crowning his head with glory, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, for the people that are standing up front, Lord God, ready and in obedience, Lord God, to pray for those who are need, in need of prayer, Lord God. So have your way in this place, dear Heavenly Father. And Father God, as we begin to focus on our health, Lord God, our, our, our spiritual health, dear Heavenly Father, is our connection with you, Lord God. So touch, Father God, in a mighty way. Allow us, Father God, help us to open those Bibles on a daily basis to start our day out with you, Lord God. Our spiritual health, dear Heavenly Father. And then our mental and emotional health, health dear Heavenly Father. Oh God, 2 Timothy the one and ten, seven says that you have not given us the spirit of fear but of power, love and a sound mind, Lord God keep our minds first focused on thee, dear Heavenly Father, a mindset Lord God that wakes up with you on it, Lord God, so that the day is guided of you, dear Heavenly Father, and then Father God, our physical health, Lord God Oh, God, our bodies house the Holy Spirit, Lord God. So clean us up, Lord God. Give us the mindset to want to be healthy in our bodies, dear Heavenly Father. And as we go through this service today, God, have your own divine way, Lord God. Move in this place, Lord God. Move any distractions, Lord God, that would hinder anyone from hearing from you, Lord God. Move in the ministers on this day, Lord God. The songstress, Lord God. Have your way. Fall fresh in this place, Lord God. It is in Jesus' mighty name that we thank you. Call it done. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, if you desire prayer, our ministers are waiting. Every soul and every seat is worshiping God in their own way. Hallelujah.
That means you got to give him something. Song said, I will not be silent. Some of y'all just as silent as all outdoors. Has God been good to you all this week? And when we come to church, it's not about somebody forcing you to do anything. As we'll see in our message today, when God has been good to you, that means I don't know how you can just be quiet when you come to church. I know many of y'all are watching the women's basketball, the men's basketball. You're watching your favorite show this week. And you know how when, especially because we mostly black, uh, we start talking to the people in the movie. Somebody say amen. And so here's the deal. It's okay to talk in church as long as you're talking to the one who woke you up this morning. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand on your feet and I want you to rest on your feet wherever you are because at the end of the day, uh, it's better when we're uniformed in worshiping God together. We know we take that from the book of Acts, but we also can go to the book of Ezra when uh, everybody got on one accord. Everybody say one accord. 
because that's what worship is. When worship is done together, then how many know that there's more power in the room? You still not getting that. We're talking about health matters this month. Anybody here has been having health challenges in their life? I'm just trying to ask. Anybody know some people you love that are dealing with health challenges in your life? And as we go through this series, what you'll recognize is worship plays a part in somebody having an atmosphere where God can do miracles, signs, and wonders. And I want to get you started on this first Sunday of this quarter to have a worshipful mindset so that as we walk through these next few months, the atmosphere will be so strong in here because when you walk through the doors, you really believe the verse that says, enter into his gates, what? With thanksgiving and into his course with what? You still not getting it. Enter in what? With thanksgiving. That means even though I may be tired, I'm still thankful. Even though my week didn't go the way I wanted to, I'm still thankful. Even though I might be frustrated, I'm still thankful. Another part of that is, the Bible says death and life are in the power of what? Not your neighbor's tongue for you all the time. That means I got to open my own mouth and give God praise. Am I talking to somebody? Let me try it. Let me try it. Not because the preacher telling you to. I'm trying to help us get into the mindset once again of worshiping. See, when you worship during the week, it's easier when you walk in here on Sunday. So there's some stuff Jesus can do that Ice Spice can't do for you. There's some stuff that Jesus can do that K-Dot and J. Cole's beef ain't going to do nothing for you. But when you enter into his courts with praise, you can bring your own worship in because you've been having worship all week long. How many people worship all week long? I mean, I mean, when you start your morning off, you ought to just thank God when you roll out of bed. That's worship. Somebody say that's worship. Uh, when, when, he, when he opened doors for you that nobody can open, that's worship when you tell him thank you. Any grateful people in the house today? So here's what I want you to do. Aaron, I want you just to bring it down. And Cordell, I want you to, and, and Ebony just to say, and I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Because I want us to worship together. Somebody say together. Can you do me a favor? Look at your neighbor side and say, hey, neighbor. I know we don't do this all the time, but could you sing with me real quick? Now, see, don't worry about what you sound like to me. Worry about what you sound like to him. Because in his ears, it's nothing but beauty that's coming from your Who am I talking to right now? Now, I know we had Easter. I know we had all that. But the Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. Let me try. Let me see this section. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and what? Be glad in it. Somebody put your hands together right now. Now go ahead and let's see how we can do this. Come on. Now y'all try that. And I will. And I will. Come on. Yeah, yeah. You can close your eyes. That way you ain't got to worry about folk looking at you. It's just you and God. It's okay. And you're not talking to me. You're not trying to impress me. You're talking to him. Listen to the words. Come on. I'm breathing. I will. And I will say, I will yeah, that sounds good. I will, I will. I like that. I like that. Make it personal. You're talking to him, remember, not to me. Come on. I am breathing. You don't remember the words? They're on the screen. Come on. I. Even you cool dudes, you cool dudes, you can worship too. Come on, come on. God be silent. Come on. Come on. All right, well, come on, get your hand in your pocket. Get your hand in your pocket. You can be cool and worship. Say it with your chest. Come on. I know you little boozy people, you can worship too. Come on, get your little nice purse. Come on. 
I am breathing. He gave you life this morning. He gave you the ability to get what you have. Come on. I like that. I think this side catching on. Come on. I dare somebody lift their hands and tell him. Not be silent. I ain't gonna be quiet in church today. He's been too good. Worship you. Come on, worship you. Worship you. Come on. As long as I got breath in my body, I am breathing. My worship. He is my. This is what you're going to give God? Come on. All of it. Give him all of it. Receive. Come on. Is that what you want him to receive from you? Come on. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my. Receive. All of mine. One more time. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. I like it. I like it. Yeah. That's corporate worship. Now come on and give him your best praise in the house today. Come on, set the atmosphere, set the atmosphere. You gonna get out of this what you put into it. Set the atmosphere. If church is dry, that's gonna show worship dry. You came in here dry. But if you wanna get something out of it, somebody just shout hallelujah in the house today. Don't just, if your neighbor ain't saying nothing, say something loud so your neighbor will get disturbed. Come on, set the tone for your side. I, I need somebody on this side to set the tone for what it's supposed to look like. What my folk in this side right here? Give me about three people right now who can just wave your hand. I ain't worried about the rest of them. Give me somebody. What about in this side right here? Who's going to give God praise in this side? Am I talking to somebody in the house today? This is not a show. This is an experience with God. Somebody say amen. We are not impressed with each other today. But how many are impressed with Jesus today? That's who we came to worship today. Every now and then we got to do this. We got to slow down, do a little teaching, and, and do a little worshiping together. Because sometimes, I mean, you know, your week could be a little tough, huh? Sometimes you get a little tired around this time, huh? You've been running them kids to 40 events, and you just tired. But how many know you got to give him your tired praise? Because somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody wish they had the kids that you had. Somebody wish they had a job like you had to be. Am I talking to somebody today? So every time we give chance, we ought to just give him our best, not just the rest, our best praise. Somebody say amen. Listen, do me a favor while you're standing. Go ahead and push that share button and invite all of those who are on Facebook and give and let everybody know, like, and subscribe on YouTube. And we welcome all those who are on our website. We're so glad to have all of you in worship day. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, while you're standing, grab your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38. And so we're thankful for all those who are serving today in person and those who are online helping serve. We're grateful for you. Also today, once again, we're starting Health Matters. Everybody shout Health Matters. For this month, we got a lot of things. I need you to go to the website. Uh, if you can't remember all the great things we have going on and go under discipleship. Somebody shout discipleship. You go into discipleship, you'll see all the classes that, and the groups that we'll have, and then you'll see all the events that'll be taking place. Give me a little bit more, Terrence, uh, if you got it, if you got it. Uh, and, and so we want to make sure that we are ready uh, to grow through this month together and make sure that we can grow together in God. And so we want to make sure our health is right. Somebody say amen. One event that you want to see on there that we added just last week on the last week of this month, uh, we're going to have a night of healings. Somebody say healing. 
And so that night, we're going to just believe God that God's going to heal some people in this place. Somebody say amen. amen. Matter of fact, we're not going to wait till that day, but we're going to be doing it all month long. Somebody say amen. amen. And so, but what we've done, I called my brother, uh, Dr. Rudolph McKissick. I invited him. So he's going to be preaching for us on Wednesday, the 24th of April. Somebody say amen. amen. It's going to be a Wednesday night. How many of y'all coming to that Wednesday night service? All right. How many of y'all need to tell somebody next to you, you need to come to that service? How many of y'all heard uh, Bishop Rudolph McKissick preach? Let me see your hand. All right. So listen, if you haven't, make sure you bring yourself and your cousins with you. All right. And so that's going to be a wonderful time. So many great things going to be taking place this month and next month. And thereafter, we want to make sure we're growing in God today and through this month. All right. So uh, right now, we're going to look at uh, some verses that get us started in this series and to be honest with you, I've been praying and praying about this series, and, and God's been, you know, guiding me here, there, and everywhere. And, and to get started here today, I'm just excited uh, to get this started today. Somebody say amen. And so I want to make sure that our faith is in position to receive from God, because God can be speaking and we're not ready. Somebody say amen. amen. But I want to make sure we're ready. I want to make sure we're ready today. Uh, we're going to look at Isaiah 38, verses 1 through 6, verses 21 through 22, and then verses 7 through 8. Isaiah 38, verses 1 through 6, verses 21 through 22, and then verses 7 through 8. If you have Isaiah 38, somebody shout, Word. It reads this way, starting at verse 1 from the New Living Translation. About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you. And I've served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add, somebody say add. I will add 15 years to your life and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. Yes, I will defend this city. Go to verse 21 real quick. Verse 21 says, Isaiah had said to Hezekiah's servants, make an ointment from figs and spread it over the boil and Hezekiah will recover. Hezekiah asked, what sign will prove that I will go to the temple of the Lord? Let's go back to verse 7. What sign? What sign? He asked for a sign. Verse 7, if you have it, somebody shout word. All right. He says, and this is the sign from the Lord to prove that he will do as he promised. I will cause the sun's shadow to move 10 steps backwards on the sundial of Ahaz. So the shadow on the sundial moved backwards 10 steps. So the, so the shadow on the sundial moved backwards 10 steps. I want to lift up in our first message in our series on health matters. Everybody shout health matters. Our first message today is when God uses sickness to show you a bigger picture. When God uses sickness to show you a bigger picture. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We can't preach without you because, Holy Spirit, you are the preacher. We thank you, Jesus, you are the word. Father, you are our leader. We ask right now that you remove any hindrance in this place. We thank you right now for minds that are ready to receive, hearts that are open to talk, to talk with you and listen to you. And we thank you, God, that even after we have heard your word, we will let that word marinate in our spirits and then share that word so that someone else may be encouraged by that same word. 
and become the disciples you called us to be. God, we pray right now for those who are joining online. We thank you, God, that wherever you are, that you minister to them just like you're ministering to those who are in person. God, we love you, we trust you, and we're ready to receive. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said amen. 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 You can be seated in the presence of the Lord on this wonderful Lord's Day. When God uses sickness to show you a bigger picture. There's a quote that says, life is what happens to us when we're making other plans. Life itself is what happens to us. We've said that before, but life is what happens to us when people are making other plans. And when it comes to our health, everyone alive wants to be free from sickness and disease. No one wakes up and says, I want to be sick. No one wakes up and says, I want to be disabled. I want to go through this sickness in my body or even someone I love. I, I, we don't desire sickness or disease in our lives. And to be honest with you, it's heartbreaking to hear the stories of sickness ravaging the lives of good people with illnesses that doctors say that hey, they have no cure for, that there's nothing else that they can do. They've done all they could do with their sickness. And what happens is many times those wonderful people, those good people pass away because of an illness that ravaged their lives and ravaged their mind and depleted their resources in their body. And they no longer could sustain the, anything that they were going through because of that sickness. And they had plans, but life happened. Their health failed either due to their lifestyle that may not have been as healthy as it needed to be or simply because we live in a fallen world. And in this world, there is sickness and disease. And we'll talk about that a little bit next week. But, but sometimes good th bad things happen to good people. Am I talking to somebody? And on the contrary, though, there are those Remarkable stories of individuals with the same fallen health status as someone else who passed away. Uh, but Brother Joel, but, but seemingly they make miraculous recoveries. Uh, they, they, they baffle the doctors and they baffle science because there is no logical way that they could have the same thing that seems incurable that someone else has, but yet... They survive, and not just survive, they end up thriving more in life. And they go on, and, and many start foundations, or what they may do is get into the medical field. And, and because they realize that their health matters, and their sickness had a greater purpose, had greater meaning than what was actually going on in their bodies and on the surface. Now, I want you to understand Although death can be inevitable, how many know healing can too? Yeah. Healing can too. And regardless, regardless, God has a deeper meaning for our health status. Uh, as we look this, at the story of Hezekiah, we want to learn how believers can approach God in faith, even when they face sickness seemingly beyond recovery. That's why we're talking about when God uses sickness to show us a bigger picture. As we begin to approach this, there are five things. Somebody shout five things. There are five things we discover about the life of Hezekiah, who is the king there in Judah. We recognize that Israel and Judah were split. Israel was all one country, all one group of people. But, of course, we know Solomon disobeyed God. And because he disobeyed God, the kingdom was split. Two in one part of the kingdom, two tribes and ten in the other. That means Judah was in the south side uh, of the kingdom. And Judah here is where King Hezekiah is given leadership. And King Hezekiah uh, is the son of Ahaz, who, who was not the best king ever. And then, of course, because of the lineage, he now is next. And what we do understand is this is Judah. Judah is also the tribe uh, that, that ends up being the tribe that King David 
ends up coming from. But not just that, we recognize that Judah also is the tribe and the lineage in which Jesus Christ comes through. What we recognize here is we're recognizing the lineage of Jesus Christ. Hezekiah is in that line uh, of, of Judah that where Jesus Christ comes from. And that means he's a very important character, a very important figure in biblical history. We can learn today a couple of things about him and his approach to uh, responding to uh, when sickness comes into his life. Matter of fact, here are five things we see uh, how God ends up using sickness in his life to help him see a bigger picture. And the first thing we recognize in our text in verse 1, number 1, you can write this down. He was given an unexpected prognosis. He was given an unexpected prognosis. If you don't know what the word prognosis is, it's just a big, big word uh, for uh, the, the future of his life. What is his future? What is uh, the writing on the wall for his life? What is going to take place in his life that is predicted, that is foretold that this is your future. This is what's next in your life. Here we recognize in the text that this king, this leading powerful king, now has an unexpected prognosis because of a diagnosis in his life. Here's what we recognize in chapter 38, verse 1. Uh, when we meet King Hezekiah in verse 1, here's what we realize. He receives a visit from the preacher prophet in his life by the name of Isaiah, who with a word from God. As a matter of fact, you read it real quick. It says about that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. Now, now, what we got to understand here is seen first uh, a, a welcoming pastoral care visit because Isaiah had shown up to the palace and he had shown up to the bedside, him being the prophet, Isaiah, uh, the king, uh, Hezekiah, being the king and the political figure. It's where God meets the government. And here's where the God, God's people have now come to be a, a blessing in the presence of the government. I mean, this relationship between Isaiah and Hezekiah, as you read their, their volleying of their relationship uh, throughout the annals of time, you'll recognize that they had a somewhat good relationship. And once again, here we recognize it seems that Hezekiah is being visited because word has gotten to Isaiah that the king is sick. And here we realize here in our text uh, that it seems like just a regular old pastoral care visit because Isaiah had shown up to the bedside of Hezekiah. And I'm sure Hezekiah was uplifted in spirits that here, the man of God, the preacher, the seemingly pastor in his life, in this season of his life, the voice of God, that God spoke to him. And God was always accurate when he spoke through Isaiah the prophet. But however, Isaiah this time had not brought comfort. But Isaiah brought discouraging news about the fate of Hezekiah due to the diagnosis, as the text later on tells us, of a boil that was malignant on his body. I mean, here's what we realize. Uh, Hezekiah, Hezekiah, should I say, being only 39 years of age at the time that we read chapter 38, verse 1. Uh, Hezekiah is just 39 years old. And at this time of this story, he's still a young man, not even 40 years old yet. I mean, he's in the, in the prime of his life. He's having the time of his life in many aspects. And, and, and here's what we realize. He's yet given the prognosis that he's going to die. Now, it's one thing to hear you're going to die from somebody who doesn't know God. It's another thing to hear that you're going to die from the man of God that has spoken into your life, and every time they've spoken, it's always been accurate. Here he is, hearing from God that Isaiah told him, he told Hezekiah, God said, set your affairs in order. Put your house in order, Hezekiah, 
because you will not recover from this illness. And sometimes, can I be honest with you, we don't get the word from God. We expect it to get from God when it comes to our sickness. Now, the question is, how do we handle that? How do you handle when God doesn't speak what you thought he ought to have spoken? How do you handle being a child of God, but God seemingly gives you the news that a sinner should receive? Now, now here's what we got to understand. We want to raise that question because we got to realize how did Hezekiah handle that? Well, I want to tell you that God gave him some cues telling him to make sure he prepares his household and gets his business in order and make sure his life ends in a way that pleases God before he sees God face to face. Tell him to get his affairs in order. If he was here today, he'd say, do you have your insurance policy ready? Do you have a will ready? Do you have uh, the power of attorney ready? If they take you to the hospital of Judah, do you have who's going to handle your DNR? Do not resuscitate. Do, because these are the questions, these are the things that we don't really deal with, especially in our community, until those things come to play. And then we're arguing and mad about who's going to handle what because we didn't set our affairs in order. And here's what we recognize in our text. God told him, get your stuff together, Hezekiah. Isaiah tells him, as the Lord has spoken, get it together. As a matter of fact, how, how did he handle this news? Well, I want to tell you, Hezekiah had a few choices as how he could have responded to that news. Can I tell you what he could have done? Uh, he could have gotten mad and not even believed Isaiah. Could have been in denial and say, I don't believe you. you. You've been accurate, but you're off today. I don't believe that's a word from the Lord. You, you must have been drinking or something. You must have some sin in your life. You're coming to me telling me I'm 39. How you think I'm about to die? I've been good to God because I know God's been good to me. I'm not out here running the streets like everybody else. I'm trying to do what God called me to do. And you're telling me that God told me I'm about to die? Could have been in denial. Could have had an attitude. In other words, he could have believed it. He could have believed what Isaiah said immediately. And he could have made plans because he's the king to kill himself. So I ain't going out like this. I ain't letting a boil take me out, some little disease. I'm not going out like that. I got too much pride to die like this. Could have had himself killed if he wanted to. He is the king. Uh, or he could have chosen to face what was given to him. He could face it. Because real, the reality is, you don't have a chance of fixing it if you don't try to face it. And here we realize, we realize that what was given to him, uh, he's trying to face when we read our text. And we see how he chose to respond in verses 2 through 3. So the first thing we realize, he was given an unexpected prognosis. The second thing we realized, uh, uh, Deacon Dre, is he made an undignified petition. He made an undignified petition. Verse 2 through 3, if you're not understanding what's taking place, look at what verse 2 through 3. He got the news, and then verse 2 says, when Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Here's his prayer. Remember, O Lord, how I've always been faithful to you. And have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then the text says, he broke down and wept bitterly. Now, now here's what I want you to realize. When we meet uh, Isaiah here in verses 2 through 3, he I'm going to say Hezekiah in verses 2 through 3, Hezekiah, being a king, was looked upon as one who was always to be regal. And he would be dignified. And poised because not only was he a king and it was expected of him, he was a man, but he was also a leader. And so, so what was expected of him, because he was a looked upon as a strong person, was for him to be poised no matter what the circumstance. It's expected of him. As a matter of fact, you couldn't be around kings and have a sad countenance on your face. 
because kings wanted to make sure their disposition was lifted. They had a lot of weight on their shoulders, and they didn't need people around them looking sad, and they wanted themselves to have a cheerful disposition because you look strong if you kept your face straight. But here, anything less would be undignified. You, you, you got to be uh, erudite. You got to be uh, looking good. You got to be looking strong. You got to have poise. You got to look the part of king no matter what comes your way. And apparently, Hezekiah had lived his life in that particular way. I'm sure he had some other news in his life that wasn't favorable. We read the text. We've seen some other things that come into his life. But can I tell you, some stuff will come into your life that will shake you to your core like you've never been shaken before. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but if it ain't happened, just keep on living. <laughs> but after receiving this news, Deacon Cornell, uh, we realize that when Isaiah comes to visit him in chapter 38, verse 1, Isaiah, Hezekiah was already on his sick bed, but he didn't know his sick bed was supposed to be his death bed. And, 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 but after receiving this news on his sick bed, here's what, here's what Hezekiah does. He, Hezekiah, uh, the, the, the text lets us know that he turned his face to the wall. Now, when we read this text, when we look at history, uh, many of these particular people had beds that were facing the wall. And apparently, when he got the news from Isaiah, he had some others probably around him. Maybe he was by himself. We don't know. The text doesn't tell us. But what we do know is that after Isaiah gave him that news, he didn't stay looking in the same direction. He changed his position and looked toward the wall. He looked toward the wall, but he didn't just look at the wall. The text tells us he turns towards the wall where he lay and he prayed to God for himself. You're not getting that. He got a word from God from a prophet. But he says, I don't want secondhand information. Even though it might be accurate, I'm going to talk to the Lord for myself. Am I talking to somebody here right now? Say, I appreciate the preacher preaching today, but I got my own telephone in my bosom. And I can call him, y'all ain't from Terrell, Texas, up anytime I get ready because I want to hear from him myself. Am I talking to somebody here today? Turn his face to the wall. And, and when he turned his face to the wall, the text says he prayed to God for himself. Now, I want you to read the text because the text says he held it together while Isaiah was giving him the news. It may be that some servants had to escort Isaiah to come in. And when he came in, uh, he, he was still the king. Even though he was in his bad position and bad condition, he was still the king. He was keeping it together. But, but here we recognize that Isaiah walked out and left after giving the news. Text doesn't say Isaiah prayed for him or anything. Doesn't infer that the man of God prayed or anything. He just gave him the news and walked off. Boy, that seems like that's a cold-blooded situation. That, that somebody just gave you some news and walked off. You ever been to the hospital? Because uh, we have to go to the hospital and see people. And sometimes when tragedy happens, how many know sometimes doctors don't have the best etiquette? They just cut it straight. They sick and they ain't going to make it. And they just walk off. Seems like it's not merciful. Seems like there's no care. It's not that there's no care. It's that this is the news. This is what you got to deal with. I'm just giving it to you straight. Do you not know this world can't handle people giving it to them straight? We say we want somebody to keep it real until somebody keeps it. I'm trying to help somebody right now. Isaiah said, I'm just keeping it real with you. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm just the messenger delivering the message. Ain't no, ain't no Ill, Ill motives. Ain't nothing else going on. I'm just relaying what the Lord God said. Hezekiah, realizing authority, understanding he is not the king of kings, but he has to talk to the king of kings. Even though he is king, he's still under the authority of the king of kings. And so he ends up yielding himself in prayer. 
And he held it together in the beginning, but, but then he asked God a few things when we read our text today. Can, can you remember what he says? Uh, he, he began to tell God, he's got God, uh, I'm telling you how I've lived a faithful and trustworthy life. And I ain't just living for me, I lived it for you. I got to know you, and I've been trying to live my life according to your will. And God, not just that, I've also served you. And what I've tried to do, God, is please you all of my life with my life. But then the text says, if you keep reading there in that text, it says, he said all that apparently with a strong face. But I don't know about you, but sometimes you can be holding it together, and all of a sudden, here come the waterworks. Do I have anybody here who's bold enough to say, you know what, there's, there's been times I've, I've held it together as long as I could, but out of nowhere, the tears just start flowing. Matter of fact, that's what the text says. It says, but then his emotions and the weight of the news and the reality begin to sink in, and he was overwhelmed, and he broke down, and the text says he wept bitterly. King James says he wept sorely. What this simply means, sorely means, he wept with intensity, and he wept loudly. See, because the reason is, he was in grief about the light he would soon no longer have, and the dreams and the plans he now could no longer achieve simply because his life was coming to an end. He was in mourning, mourning mentality of what was to soon be lost physically. But at that moment, he wasn't caring about being dignified. Because sometimes, dignity, dignified got to go out the door. He was communicating to his God about a situation that God himself would soon end his life. And I want you to realize, if you go to verses 9 through 19, when you get a chance, read verses 9 through 19. Because that section of scripture lets us know and describes the thoughts that, Isaiah, that Hezekiah had after receiving this news. He was broken. He was confused. He, he was frustrated. He was hurt. He went through every range of emotion as everybody else did. And here he's talking to God. He's, he's, he's slobbering and crying and snot coming out. Everything's going on. Because when you get hurt bad enough, you don't care who's looking around at you. When, when you want something, an answer from God bad enough, sometimes you got to turn your back to everybody else and get alone with God. Because he recognized if God gave the prognosis, only God can give me the healing I need. Am I talking to somebody? And that's why when you are sick and that's why when you're going through certain situations, don't get people around you who are not agreeing with what you're trying to believe in. If you're trying to believe that God's going to heal you, find you some people who know how to believe and touch and agree that God can. Do I have anybody in the house right now? That's that scripture where two or three are touching and agreeing. God says, I'll be in the midst. Two is a number of confirmation. That means I'm agreeing with you that God is not only able, but he's also willing. Do I have anybody in the house? And that's why Jesus, when Jesus was dealing with people, and when somebody was sick or somebody was dead, and they called Jesus, there were mourners that were there in the room present. And what Jesus would do is take all the mourners and put them out so he could get to work. Can I tell you, you don't need nobody around you that's mourning your death when you're still trying to fight for your life. Am I talking to somebody? You don't need nobody around you that's mourning your marriage when you're still trying to fight to get back together. Am I talking to somebody right now that's mourning your children when you still believe that if you train up a child in the way that they should go, they should go then when they're old, they, God said they will return. Do I have anybody in the house today? Put some folk around you who believe like you believe when you're in a fight. And if you can't find them, turn your back to them and put your face to the wall. Because when he looked at that wall, he looked at something he could not knock down by himself. But he realized he had a God who was able. 
So not only did, did he receive an unexpected prognosis, here's what we realized. He received an uncommon prophetic word and prescription. I mean, he prayed. He prayed an undignified prayer. He forgot all about that kingly stuff because he needed to touch God. Didn't care about all that. Didn't care about all the protocols and how anybody looked at him. He didn't care who heard him because the Bible says he wept sorely. He wept loudly. And here's what we realize. After he prayed like that, verses 4 through 6 and verse 21 tell us in Scripture that, that he received an uncommon prophetic word. And then he received a prescription. Somebody shout prescription. Now, now here we see in the text, in Scripture... When God says something, he means what he says. It appears to be final when God says you're going to die. But how many know God's ways are not our ways? How many know his plans are always unfolding? And the word had gone forth from God himself that from, through Hezekiah, uh, to, to Hezekiah, that this sickness, this health condition, would be the end of his life, would be the death of Hezekiah. But after this dignified petition, the Bible says, uh, if you go read 2 Kings chapter 20, it's the same story. And, and in, in 2 Kings chapter 20, it gives a detail that's not given here in Isaiah 38. And what it says in 2 Kings chapter 20 about this particular piece is, after Hezekiah prayed, it says, before Isaiah could leave the courtyard of the palace, where the story is also found, it says that, that God spoke again to Isaiah. Here's what he said to Isaiah. He told Isaiah, he told Isaiah go back in there and tell Hezekiah, that I am the God of his ancestor, King David. And I want you to tell him something. I want you to tell Hezekiah, I heard his prayer. But not just that. Not only did I hear your prayer, I'm going to act on your behalf. Boy, somebody ought to get excited right there. Matter of fact, if you read the text real quick, it says that he stated, not only am I going to act on your behalf and I'm going to heal you, I'm going to add 15 years to your life. Oh, my God. Somebody shout add, add, add. If you don't understand numbers, five is a number of grace. That's three times grace in your life. I'm going to add numbers to your life because you are supposed to die today. But because I heard your prayer, I'm going to add 15 years to your life. Now, now understand this. He would die. You're going to die still. You got 15 more years. But today ain't that day. Boy, I wish I had somebody here today. Not only that, here's what he says. But, but also he says, I know that there is a king from Assyria trying to take over Judah. Trying to put y'all in bondage and put y'all in chains. And, and he'd been bragging uh, that nobody could stop him from capturing Hezekiah and Judah. Here's what God says about that to tell, uh, to tell Hezekiah through Isaiah. God said he himself would defend and deliver them. He said, don't you worry about it, uh, Hezekiah. You ain't big and bad enough to deal with the king of Assyria. But don't you worry about it. You're going to live long enough to see me handle what you can't. Okay, here's, here's this, this, this. And then he gave him, here's this, listen to this, listen to this. Then he gave him an uncommon prescription. Y'all still not getting that. Go to verse 21. Go to verse 21. Verse 21 says, listen to this. Isaiah has said to Hezekiah's servants, I know ain't nothing in the pharmacy for this kind of boil. This kind of ball apparently had killed so many people. Yeah. It could have been leprosy with some type of disease uh, that apparently was incurable and not treatable. But, but, but God told Isaiah, I got a special concoction. 
y'all ain't seen yet. I got an uncommon prescription because I got an undignified petition. You still not getting that. You still not getting that. Text says, Isaiah said to Hezekiah's servants, make an ointment from figs. Spread it all over the boil. And, and here's what's going to happen when you put this together and you're rubbing on him. Hezekiah will recover. Ooh, somebody say will recover. You still not getting that? He had his servants mix up an ointment, mix up that concoction. He rubbed it. They rubbed it all over Hezekiah. Now, here's what you got to realize. When Hezekiah didn't know what else to do, when he faced this uh, bad information and bad news, should I say, Hezekiah did what he knew to do. That is, he called on the Lord for uncommon favor in an unbearable situation. That's why it's always important, children of God, to always pray because we never know God's personal will fully for our lives in every situation. That's why the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. It says, seek and ye shall find. It says, knock and the door shall be opened. Of course, we read that text, we recognize it doesn't just say ask, but it says keep on asking. It doesn't just say seek, but it says keep on seeking. It doesn't just say knock, but it says keep on knocking. Could you elbow somebody and say keep on going after it, keep on going after it. As long as you are breathing, you ought to keep asking. As long as you have breath in your body, you ought to keep on talking to him about it. Because you never know that what, how he's going to respond to your undignified petition. I thought I had some praying folk in here this day. And here's what we realize. Now he has this uh, uncommon prescription. And then we realize, number four, he can recognize this. After that, we realize that, that Hezekiah desired undeniable proof of the promise. God says he's going to do it. But can we be honest? Just because God said it don't mean we really believe it the first time. Am I talking to somebody? There are scriptures you read all the time, but you still don't know if God is going to do it. Because you said, God, I've been young and I've been old, David, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor a seed, what? But you know, I saw some church folk Asking you for money. Some old ones. You done seen yourself going through some challenges. It's not that God doesn't eventually show you he comes through. But how many know every now and then you have faith, but your faith can be a little weak. And although God gave the word, he will protect and heal. Doubt still lingered in the mind and the heart of Hezekiah. Because truth is, he desired to get back to church. He's still not getting that. Look at verse 22. Verse 22 lets us know, look at what he says. Because he, he says, and Hezekiah had asked, what sign will prove that I will go to the temple of the Lord? This boy is laying on his back, deathly ill, and the only thing he got to ask God after God says, I'm going to heal you is, am I really going to get to go back to church? Oh, Y'all missing this point. He says, am I going to get to make it back to the temple? That's all I need to know right now. I know you say you're going to heal me, but I got worship on my mind. You still not getting that? I just want to see the church one more time, regardless of, of what's taking place. So he desired to get to the temple, and he wanted that extra peace that it should come to pass as we read in verse 22, now here's what you got to realize. God then obliges by telling him to look for a sign that it will happen and this sign will involve the sun. Okay, y'all not getting that. Y'all not getting that. The sign that I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do, I'm going to show it to you by something I do with the sun. Okay, still not getting that. You see, the sun sets... 
around the same time every single day. But on this particular day, what God says, I'm going to prove to you, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. And here's what we realize. The text says, when you read verses 7 through 8, uh, what it realized is that the day, that day, the sundial, it won't just go forward and progress like it normally does. But here's what I'm going to do for you, Hezekiah. On this day, I'm going to let the sun, I'm going to let the shadow of the sun that shows that it's setting not move back one step, not move back two steps, not move back three steps. I'm going to let it move all the way back 10 steps. And that's going to signify that I am God. And I'm going to back up time and give you more time. You, you still, y'all still, y'all ain't reading y'all Bibles, are you? God says, I love you so much, I'm going to do something and let the whole world see something. And you realize what it means for your situation. Y'all still not getting that? See, here's what we realize. He would work in the heavenlies to confirm something he was about to do in the earth. Ooh, God still works the same way. Am I talking to somebody right now? And, and, and when Hezekiah heard this, can I tell you the last thing we see here in the text? The Bible says in verse 20, he gave thanks with an unavoidable praise. He gave thanks. Somebody shout thanks. With an unavoidable praise. Look at verse 20 real quick. If you got verse 20, here's what verse 20 says. It's sinking in to Hezekiah at this point. God is for real. God's going to do it. Matter of fact, here's what he says. Think of it. The Lord is ready to heal me. He got ointment on his, on his part where the boil is. And he says, think of it. The Lord really is going to heal me. Matter of fact, here's my response to him healing me. I will sing his praises with instruments every day of my life in the temple of the Lord. See, here's what you got to realize. Hezekiah apparently is not healed just yet, possibly, based on the construction of the text. But the ointment has been rubbed on his body and the word that he shall live and not die just yet had been spoken into his life. And verse 20 lets us know and lets us in on how his faith is responding going forward to the fact that God is giving him another chance. Can I tell you what he says once again? He knows the Lord is ready to heal him. Somebody shout, God is ready. See, because he said he will sing praises with instruments. Somebody shout praises. <laughs> that means, Hezekiah says, I already got it in my mind. When I get up off my back, and when I get to that temple, it's going to be praise on sight. I'm still not getting it. <laughs> He's visualizing praising the Lord when he gets on his feet and get back to the temple. That means he's going to sing to praises to God with music thanking God. Here's what you got to realize. He plans on doing this in the temple. I can't lay on my back and not get up when he has done this for me. I got to get up. I could praise him here on my back. I could praise him on live stream of Judah, but because he did something for me, nobody else could do. I got to put on my little clothes, brush my little teeth, get my little hair together, run on down to the temple of Judah, and I got to give him some praise. Matter of fact, he didn't just say, I'm going to praise him one time. Matter of fact, here's what he says. He says, I'm going to praise him every day of my life. <laughs> do, I, do I see what's going on? The reason he says that 
He says he's going to give God an unavoidable praise. Now, I know you're asking me, Pastor, what does that mean, unavoidable? Let me tell you what it means. It's unavoidable because every time he thinks of how things could have gone another way. I wish I had somebody here right now. <laughs> he can't help himself. He's just glad to be alive. And God gave him another chance. Somebody shout out unavoidable. What he's saying is, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I get happy in my soul. When I look that, that my, my, my bed could have been my coffin, I got to give him praise. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I got to lift up my hands. I got to throw back my head. I got to shout hallelujah. I got to sing praises to his name. Do you have anybody in the house today who can just open your mouth and just shout thank you? I know your neighbor might be looking at you. But look at him and say, neighbor, you don't know, like I know, what the Lord have done for me. As a matter of fact, you can't tell it. Like I can tell it. What the Lord has done for me. Now we must go back to how this all began. So you have to read chapter 38 and put that before chapters 36 through 37. You can sit down, I'm almost done. You got to go back to chapter 38. But then you got to read chapters 36 through 37 for chronological order. Because all the stories in the Bible aren't in chronological order. And when you go back and put chapter 38 before chapters 36 through 37 for chronological order, you'll discover that Hezekiah got sick and was healed and then a big bad king of Assyria showed up who had defeated all the nations around who were some were bigger and stronger than Judah where Hezekiah was. So here's the deal. He had his servants go tell Hezekiah, servants, that it's inevitable we're going to take Judah. We're going to take Judah. He had his servants go tell Hezekiah, and, and, and then he said it to all of his people. Y'all coming with us. We're going to take y'all down. Matter of fact, uh, Hezekiah knew it was true that he could not defeat the king of Syria. I mean, see, the king of Assyria. He knew it. He was telling the truth. But here it is. We realize that, that a king of Assyria says, there's no cure for me. Can't nobody hold me. Can't nobody phase me. What I want, I get. I'm the Debo of the Bible. Give me your chain. Give me your people. Give me you. What I want, I get. He was talking noise. Uh, he, he, says, he says, can't nobody stop what I bring. Hezekiah knew it. But he also, here it is, had just been given an unexpected deadly prognosis before the king of Assyria showed up talking noise. You're still not getting this. Walk with me. Here it is. He had just given God an undignified praise. He had just made an undignified petition to his God. He had just received an uncommon prophetic word and prescription and got some undeniable proof and a promise and was healed and made the declaration to his God that he would praise him for the rest of his days. Now check this out, Boosie. Hezekiah had done all of that and been healed and then 
the big bad king of Assyria shows up. See, here you got to realize. Here's what you got to realize. What Hezekiah may have realized about his sickness in that moment when that king showed up talking noise is that God allowed him to experience things that seemed impossible and did the impossible. And now no matter who or what shows up, he would know that all things, somebody shout all things, all things are possible. Let's get ready to run, Aaron. His sickness was to strengthen his faith for a future battle. And it was bigger than him. Can I look at somebody and say, neighbor, it's bigger than you. You thought it came to kill you. But God is letting it know he's about to reveal you. And he's strengthening your faith. His health mattered because it was a testament of the power of God. Him being healthy in front of all of his people that may have heard that he may not recover from his illness gave them faith that if God can protect the king, that if God can heal the king when it seems impossible, that same God can stand up to any king that comes in and tries to take our lives. Do I have somebody to say it's bigger than me? You're still not getting it. See, everybody right now across the United States is getting excited to see the phenomenon of a total solar eclipse on tomorrow, whether rain or shine. They're getting ready to see something happen in the sky. And see, what happens is the moon will pass between the sun and the earth because you realize the sun is 400 times larger than the moon. You're still not getting it. However, the moon will look the same size as the sun for a brief moment. You're asking why? Because the moon is 400 times closer to the sun, to the earth than it is to the sun. What am I saying? What God may be saying to somebody in here is things may look bigger to you right now because they've gotten closer to you and got in between you and not the S-U-N but the S-O-N but in reality they are much smaller because you gotta realize let me make it plain to you sickness can make the S-O-N look the same size as the sickness and make you feel that things will remain dark for a little while and it might be saying what God might be saying is you gotta put the right glasses on uh, and have the right perspective uh, because if you look uh, at the right time uh, you will come uh, to the wrong conclusion uh, you got to realize uh, the moon uh, looks bigger uh, because it's closer uh, to the S-U-N it may be uh, that God uh, is saying uh, when things uh, look discouraging uh, you ought to get closer uh, to the S-O-N and you realize that what looked too large and impossible is possible it ain't big in comparison to the S-O-N there is nothing too big too wide too powerful that my God can't do high five your neighbor and say neighbor the eclipse is a reminder that things are shifting and if God can shift the moon he can shift your sickness he can shift your situation he can shift your diagnosis he can shift your thinking he can shift anything 
that may be weighing you down, look at your neighbor and say, shift. You still not getting it. You still not getting it. And it doesn't take long when he gets ready to do it. When Jesus died on the cross, the sun refused to shine. Shift. It was described as the moon running down in blood. It lasted for three hours. He died and they shifted him into a grave. But early Sunday morning, an angel sat on the rock and shifted it. He rolled the stone away and he came out with all power in heaven and earth. Push your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're one shift away from your breakthrough. You're one shift away from your healing. You're one shift away from your finances. You're one shift away from a clear mind. Shift, shift, shift it, Lord. Who is the King of glory? Who is God? God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised, he promised never to leave me, never to forsake me. But do I have somebody that can give God praise and say it's bigger than me? God wants to use my pain as somebody else's progress. God wants to use my situation to show somebody else if I can do it for you. I wish somebody could shout shift, shift, shift. When you look up tomorrow, be reminded that if God says it's gonna happen, it shall happen. Do I have somebody? Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God is able, somebody say he's able, he's able to do what no man can do. He's able to heal broken bodies. He's able to heal cluttered minds. He's able. Somebody say he's able. He's able. I dare you to shout, shake, shake my three people's hands and say, congratulations. Shift is coming. Keep on praying. Shift is coming. And while you're waiting, don't wait till the battle is over. Don't wait till your body is healed. Don't wait until you see it in faith. Go ahead and praise him right now. Go ahead and shout right now. Somebody say, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Ain't he all right? Won't he wake you up? Won't he start you on your way? Won't he deliver you when nobody else can do it? Somebody say yes. Come on, put your hands together. I believe while you're praising, he's shifting some stuff. I dare you to praise him because he's shifting some stuff. While you're at church, he's shifting some stuff. While you're opening your mouth here, he's shifting some stuff. Able. He's able. He's able. He can use what seems impossible to show us a bigger picture. Show us a bigger picture. But are you bold enough to give an undignified petition? God sees you. And you never know when he says, I'm coming your way. I'm ready to do it. 
I, I want somebody right now who, who has uh, uh, Hezekiah faith right now. Say, God, do it for me. Come on, Cordy, you got it in you. Say, Lord, do it for me. I, I, I believe somebody wants God to do it for me. If that's you, I dare you to come down out to the out to the altar. And you ain't coming for me. You ain't coming because I said there's something in your life. There's some your petition to God, maybe your loved one is sick. I can't promise you God's going to heal them on this side. But I can't promise you that he won't. Come down, come down, slide up, slide up. And when you come down, I want you to come down with faith. Come down with faith that he's able. Come down with faith. And this is your prayer to God. I want you to take this moment. Whenever you're ready, sir. Lord, if you don't do it. Come on. It just won't be done. So, Lord, do it for me. Oh, Lord, do it for me. Like only you can, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Come on, that's your pride to him. Come on. Do it for me. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah. won't be done so Lord, come on do it for me come on y'all lift it up everybody lift up on come on say, it's not a song it's a cry it's your prayer to him do come on Lord come on make that personal It's just you and your God. Come on, come on. So your prayer. That's your prayer to your God. Come on. Oh, Lord. Do it for me. One more time. Lord. Lord. Do it for me. Come on. Make it personal. Oh, Lord. Do it for me. Now I want you to ask him to fix it. Come on, say fix it. Say, Lord, fix it for me. Come on, you got to say that like you mean it. Think about how a bitch been weighing down. Oh, Lord, fix it for me.
somebody next to you. That's a sign that you're not by themselves and you're not by yourself. And this is how we're going to do this. Because when you leave here today, I ain't going to be with you. Isaiah wasn't with Hezekiah in his bedroom when he left. This guy had turned his face to the wall and talked to God himself. Here's what I want you to realize. It was bigger than Hezekiah. It was a whole nation. Could it be that what you're dealing with, God's trying to show you that if he could do it on you, he could do it on your whole family? He can do it on your, your whole job. He can do it on all your friends. That God wants to do a communal blessing. And that's why sometimes he gives his hardest test to his toughest soldiers. Matter of fact, God trusts us with trouble. And can I tell you right now, you may not like what you're going through, but God trusts you with this trouble. That's a, that's a pat on the back from God that says, I know if anybody can trust me, I can trust. I can trust you. Because I know you're going to cry. I know you're going to get mad. I know you're going to wonder. But you're going to still show up and praise my name. You're going to still give me the glory. You ain't going to understand. But your track record says you can be trusted with this trouble. Here's what I want you to do you close your eyes real quick here's what I want you to do when you squeeze that hand of that person beside you here's what you're doing you're saying I agree that whatever you're praying for that God's gonna do it come on come on tell them again I agree with you in prayer that whatever whatever you're believing God for He's going to do it. As a matter of fact, let your hands go and give God praise for your neighbor right now. I said give God praise for your neighbor. Because if you're praising God for your neighbor, your neighbor praising God for you. And when you're praising God for each other, the devil can't have his way. But God can move in mysterious ways when we celebrate. I know some of you like Hezekiah. Lord, I believe. But, but can I have a sign? Could it be that you standing here today still alive is your sign? Because how many know, if somebody really knew your story, they pass out because, because they couldn't handle what you've gone through. And you ought to right now just say, if you only knew, I'm going to give him praise right now. If you only knew, I got to give him glory right now. If you only knew, I made it to the sanctuary one more time. Because I got a great God. And he's not finished with me yet. Long as you have breath in your body. Now, if this makes sense, when you start this, I worship out. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Because you don't know when your last breath is. So while you have breath in your body, Somebody open your mouth and just tell him, thank you. Come on, try it again. Just tell him, thank you. Matter of fact, hold on, hold on. That's a good song, and then we're going to close. But, but can you thank God in advance right now? Come on, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you. you. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. Somebody thank you right now. Thank you, Mike. It's already done. You know that song. Thank you, Lord. Come on, don't just say it. Thank you, Mike. He's already doing it. Come on. Yeah.
Thank you. It's turning around right now for you. It's turning around. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody stand. We're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to go. Before we do that, there's somebody here today. You know today is the day you're supposed to join church. I need you to do like Isaiah did. Turn around. Come back down this aisle. Accept Christ. Turn around. Come back down this aisle. Join church. Turn around. Come back down this aisle. Rededicate your life to God today. Come on, get your stuff. Because here's the deal. You don't know when your last moment is. But while you have a chance, God is calling you today. Matter of fact, can we show you how we're going to respond when you come down the aisle? Come on, I know you just came down here thanking God and doing all that. But God wants you more than he wants the stuff. So right now, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, he's talking to you about one of those. Is God speaking to you about one of those? Right now, we want to make sure you get an opportunity. Come on, keep singing to Cordell. We're going to give him about 30 seconds. It don't take all day. It don't take all day. If you know God is speaking to your heart, today is the day for you to accept Christ. Today is the day for you to rededicate your life to God. Come on. What's the point of being healed if you're not going to serve? What's the point of having your needs met if you're not going to give him your life? That's the whole point. That's the bigger picture. Come on. Thank you. Come on, say it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift it up. Come on, say it. Say it. I knew that was somebody. That's somebody else. Come on, clap them up right now. Clap her up. We're waiting on you today. Come on, let's He gave you breath to get here today. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Come on. Come on, let's build it. Come on, lift it up in this place. Come on, say it. Everybody sing that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we lift our hands and we say thank you, Lord. Say I just, I just want to thank you. 
give our God, your God, a great praise in this place today for those one who came. Whether you're online, you can do that as well. Listen, I just want to say this before they come. It's giving time. Somebody say amen. amen. If God has been good to you, make sure you're good to him today and give back to him because he's a great God. This is how we can get started this month, this, this quarter. We had a good, strong quarter, the first quarter. Let's have a better one. Somebody say better one. So make sure you go ahead and give something to God as a thanks and also as appreciation for who he is in your life. You see, you can give online. You can hit those apps, uh, the QR code, should I say, and you can give and give that text to give and give all those other areas and be a blessing to the kingdom of God and give God a thank offering. I do want to just say this, and while they're coming out with announcements, come on out, Renee. And so as they're coming out with announcements, I want to just reiterate uh, that we are in Health Matters. And she's going to say it. I'm going to say it now. We're going to do Meatless Mondays starting tomorrow. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, I know some of you, you know, you can do without meat for a day. Somebody say amen. Amen. We're going to have some recipes for you in the upcoming weeks where you can have some good meatless treats and be able to do that and she's going to give you the other things make sure you look at the things that are taking place we want to do this together and make sure we work together uh was jessica brown is jessica jessica here i thought i saw her. maybe i did all right she's going to be leading workouts this week nicole are you doing workout this week too two weeks away. So we got workouts, we got all this good stuff that she's going to go over. But I want you to make sure you pay attention to the announcements right now. We're getting ready to go uh, and we'll we'll start uh, and get all this stuff together. Worship went good. Was, was worship worth it today? Was it worth the y'all coming? That's why it's good to come after Easter. Somebody said amen. And so we want to make sure we get that and she's going to take care of everything else at this time. All right, y'all. So y'all got your flyers last week, right? So you should have took a picture of it so you can try to remember because April, we rocking and we rolling. So let's make sure we're adhering to that. Our, our finance class will start at 1130. We're going to start that at 1145 and still get you out at the same time. Is that all right? Still get your same content because we want to make sure you have that food. So we want to make sure we do that. So as soon as we finish, go get your food and she'll give you direction. And then we'll come right back and get our finance class started. Thank you very much. All right, child, so on Wednesday, it's going to be Water Wednesday, so try to hold back from the soda, the caffeine, the tea, the coffee, water only on Wednesdays, but you can still eat, but let's just make sure our drinks are water. Thursdays um, on April 4th and 18th, we have grief counseling, so make sure you register online, and then workouts on Thursday, April 11th at 6.30, and then Saturday, April 27th at 8 a.m. All right, if you're a first-time guest, we would like to welcome you at this time and give you a special gift. If you're a first-time guest, if you could stand so we can recognize you. Any first-time guests? Oh, we got one in the back, y'all. Let's give it up for her. And anybody joining us online, thank you for logging in and joining us here at DC3. We're going to walk you out at this time, ma'am, so you can meet our pastor and his wife, Lady Nicole. And then after that, guys, we are going to have three stations. There's going to be two. If you're on this side of the sanctuary, we want you to go out here to these lines over here. And then we have one station at the front. So you all on this side, you can choose to go to the front. You can go to either one. It's up to you. But there are three stations available for you to make your salads. Also, the um, Black Heart Association Health Drive is also here. They are parked mobily out in the front of the church. You'll see the black mobile little a transportation card at the front and they'll give you more information about the Black Heart Association. If there's no more, let's go ahead and stand. Remember refined. Oh, red coats, red coats, the nurses in the back, health community. If you have any questions about any of that, make sure you see the ladies in the red coats. They can help you with more information. Again, young adults, make some noise for me, young adults. All right, we're gonna see y'all today at Backyard Dallas. If you need more info, Brother Brandon Tony is probably going to be out in the four-year. D. Tony, get with either one of them, myself, or any young adults you see of uh, the lounge. Get with us so you can get the information. We're going to meet there. It's going to be good vibes, a good time, games, and all of that good stuff. So meet us at Backyard Dallas. Let us go ahead and pray and be dismissed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and even forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Thank you.